Dr. Joe DeMarco, chiropractor and owner of Ocremet Health. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to fix one of the most annoying kind of chronic injuries that people can have, a high hamstring strain. A lot of times this type of an injury, it doesn't just go on for weeks, it actually can go on for months and months. And the reason being is that most people when they try to work on it on their own, or even when they go to a therapist sometimes, they're doing the wrong type of treatment. That, and the treatment that they're doing just kind of chronically aggravates the high hamstring strain so it never goes away. On today's video, I'm going to show you the correct way to treat a high hamstring strain so we can get rid of it once and for all. Before I do, if you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it. Just take a moment right now, subscribe to my channel, Ocremet Health on YouTube. Click that little bell notification. It notifies you every time I upload a new video. And at the end of today's video, if you find the information helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. So a high hamstring strain, or it's technically known, technically known as a proximal hamstring tendinopathy. I'm gonna go with high hamstring strain today during this video. It kind of rolls off the tongue a little easier. But it's not an uncommon injury, and I've seen it in my 33 years of practice. I've seen it on a lot of variety, different variety of people, whether they're weightlifters, runners, you know, just general athletes, soccer players, football players, tennis players, but also sedentary people can slowly but surely aggravate the upper hamstring tendon, whether they're sitting too much or a lot of times even driving too much. One thing I noticed, just to, as a little footnote here, people that drive a lot, what happens is no one wants to be too close to the steering wheel these days. They're all, people are afraid of that airbag. And so people tend to keep the car seat back a little bit. And when that happens, what, what people tend to do is they're stretching that right leg ever so slightly to reach the gas pedal and the brake because the seat's back a little bit too far. And by doing that and, and staying in this position, maybe you have a long commute in the morning, a long commute in the evening, and you're doing that little bit of stretch with that right leg towards the gas pedal and the brake, you're, you're slowly but surely putting stress on that upper hamstring tendon. And over time, those people will develop a high hamstring strain. So I tell people, if, if you're noticing it when you're driving, just move that car seat up just a little bit. I mean, you don't have to be up against the steering wheel, but, but you should have that car seat up close enough so that you can just have your foot comfortably on the, on the floor of the car and be able to reach the pedals without stretching forward, okay? So just a little tip to, to help you out. In order to really fix a, a high hamstring strain, you need to take a couple minutes right now and, and, and let me go over just a couple key points of the anatomy. I know people love to just jump right into the information, but if you understand the anatomy, not only will you get better quicker, but you can add on to what I'm going to show you. In other words, I'm just going to show you a few things that, that you can do to fix this. But if you understand the anatomy, then you can add on to it because you'll have the understanding of, of, of this whole problem and you'll be able to treat yourself better and, and it'll get better quickly. So, so hang in there. Let me just go over a couple key points about the uh, anatomy of, of the hamstring. Some people that sustain a high hamstring strain seem to recover very quickly. It's a quick injury and that's it. That's actually more of the minority. Most people that, that do have a high hamstring strain this is an injury that goes on. And, and for people that have this injury that's really going on for more than just weeks, it's going into months, they have a lot of similar characteristics that I'm gonna show you right now that need to be addressed. So if you look at the anatomy, there's three hamstring muscles, and the three hamstring muscles come up and form into a common tendon that attach into the pelvis at the very bottom of the pelvis on the part of the pelvis known as the ischial tuberosity or what a lot of times is just commonly referred to as the sit bone. When you sit down, this is the part of the pelvis that is sitting in the chair, okay? And the three hamstring tendons attach right to the, the ischial tuberosity. And when you have a high hamstring strain, where do you feel it? Kind of, it feels like it's right underneath the butt, right underneath the glutes. You feel that, that chronic nagging discomfort right up there, right at the top part of the hamstrings, right where this tendon is, because this tendon has become really inflamed. Now, why does this tendon stay inflamed? That's the, that's the question, you know, why doesn't this thing just stop being inflamed? Well, a couple common things that I find happen with people that have this ongoing problem is in addition to the inflammation on this hamstring tendon, on the front of the body, on the front of the pelvis, these people tend to have very tight hip flexor muscles. The psoas muscle, which attaches into the pelvis, attaches into the lumbar spine, 
is, is very tight on a lot of these individuals. If you think of the pelvis as kind of like a seesaw, the heavier person is in the front where this tight, tight hip flexor muscle is. And so it tends to pull the pelvis in this position, almost what we would call like an anterior pelvic tilt. As, the hip, as those tight hip flexors start to pull the pelvis in this direction, almost like I said, the, the, the heavier person on the seesaw, the, the seesaw goes this way, the hamstring gets actually stretched as, as the pelvis goes in that direction. So now you have this kind of chronic kind of pulling on that hamstring tendon because the tight hip flexors are kind of pulling the pelvis in this direction and those hamstring muscles are kind of under this chronic tension. And a lot of times that's why, chances are that's why the injury was started, was because those hip flexor muscles were tight to begin with and the, that particular person was more susceptible to the injury. And then once the injury happens, it's, it's, it's very difficult to heal because of the fact that that hamstring is under this chronic tension and this tendon becomes chronically tight um, under tension. Now, the first instinct that people get, and this is another reason why this problem goes on, the first instinct that people get when they start feeling this is, oh, I better stretch the hamstring. Nothing could be more wrong than trying to stretch the hamstring. As I just mentioned, this hamstring is already under chronic tension and this tendon is already irritated. So the last thing you want to do is start stretching towards the sore hamstring. It's just going to pull the hamstring even more and aggravate that tendon. And that's what most people do. They tend to start stretching it and they get into this chronic daily stretch where they're just aggravating it every single day. The only muscle group we want to be stretching is the hip flexor muscles. These are the muscles that are tight that are adding to the problem. So the hip flexor muscles need to be stretched. The hamstring muscles, they don't need to be stretched. They're already being stretched by the tight hip flexors. What we need to do with these hamstring muscles is strengthen them. We need to get those, those hamstring muscles stronger so that they can pull the pelvis back in this position. So we want those hamstring muscles, we want to uh, strengthen those hamstring muscles, loosen the hip flexor muscles. And the other thing we need to implement is because of all this chronic tugging and pulling on the hamstring tendon and the upper hamstring, people are usually after several weeks and now they're going into two, three, four months, they're developing a lot of scar tissue, a lot of fascial adhesion in this upper hamstring. So we need to do some fascia release work on the upper hamstring and the tendon. So stretching the hamstring is out. We wanna take care of three things and that's what we're gonna go over today. We wanna to do fascia release to break up the scar tissue that's tugging and pulling and adding to the problem here. We gotta break that up. We wanna strengthen those hamstrings and we wanna loosen up those hip flexor muscles. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna start with some fascia release work. We wanna break up any scar tissue that has built up. And usually if this is a problem that has gone on for several weeks or several months, you have scar tissue back there. And scar tissue is a major part of this type of a problem because scar tissue is not elastic like normal soft tissue, normal muscle. Scar tissue is, you can think of it as more leathery. It doesn't stretch like it should. And when it doesn't stretch, it's tugging and pulling. So it's adding to the aggravation of this injury that causes it to continue to go on day after day, week after week. So we need to break up that scar tissue in that area, okay? So grab a massage ball. I prefer a spiky massage ball. This is a Tai Chi Max ball from Oakramed Health. The reason I prefer a spiky massage ball is because a, a spiky massage ball can dig into the tissue deeper. There's a lot of tissue back there. This is like right in the buttocks area, high hamstring, there's a lot of tissue. If you take a smooth tennis ball, a cross ball, you're only gonna get a certain amount of soft tissue work accomplished with something like that. It's too smooth. A spiky ball, you can get in deeper. So with your fingers, sit down on a bench. I don't want you on the floor because if you're on the floor, your leg is gonna be out straight. I want that knee bent. Put your fingers under there and find the bone that you're sitting on is that issue of tuberosity. And chances are, if you have a high hamstring strain, when you palpate that area, it's gonna be tender, it's gonna be tight, and it's gonna be sore. So find that issue of tuberosity and come right off of it a little bit and you're gonna probably run right into that tendon. And like I said, you'll know because it's gonna be uncomfortable. Take the massage ball and place it right where you found that tendon, right off of that issue of tuberosity. It may not be the most fun you're gonna have all day sitting on a spiky massage ball where that tendon is a little, a little sore or a lot sore. 
So really gauge your pressure. You know, if you if you if it's if it's a uh, really irritated area, really inflamed area right now, try to use your hands to kind of settle in a little bit and, and and take some of your body weight off. All right. I want you to just sit on the massage ball right on that area where you feel the, the, the tightness and the knot and the discomfort. And I just want you to hang out there for about 60 seconds and just try to slowly breathe. I like to go in through the nose, out through the nose, and go in through the nose, out through the mouth, whatever you find relaxing. And as the 60 seconds go by, try to slowly apply more and more weight down onto the ball. If you need to, like I said, just use your hands to take some of the body weight off. Eventually the ball will settle in. It's going to do some digging in there. After about 60 seconds, now for the next 60 seconds, I want you to just try to make some subtle movements, side to side, forwards and back, diagonal, and just try to dig that ball in nice and easy for 60 seconds in all different directions and let it, let it do its job. Let it break up that adhesion, that sky tissue in there. After that, come up, move the ball just a little bit, maybe a little bit lower, get on it again. You might be on another spot that feels tight. Maybe it's not as sore. Maybe it is. Get on that part. Again, 60 seconds where you slowly try to add more and more body weight down onto the ball where you're breathing deeply. After 60 seconds, I want you to spend the next 60 seconds, again, kind of digging in there, side to side, forwards and backwards, and try to do some soft tissue work in there and break up any adhesions. Now, you can do two or three spots in there if you want. There's nothing wrong with just continuing the whole process down the hamstring muscles, that's fine. Usually most of the adhesion that we're trying to get is up here, but if you feel the need or the, and you feel the tightness finish, go all the way down the hamstring, that's absolutely fine. This technique, I want you to do it every other day. You wanna do it and then you're gonna be breaking up adhesion so it can be sore the next day. It can actually, you can feel some additional soreness, which is okay, but give it that day to heal and then do it the following day. So do this soft tissue technique every other day. If you do it very, very lightly, maybe the first day or two, and you wanna do it the following day, that's fine. But usually if you spend a significant amount of time, you know, where you're actually doing some nice deep soft tissue work, every other day is absolutely sufficient. That's all you're gonna to need to do. So that's the technique for the soft tissue work. You're doing it every other day. Now we're gonna move into some work to help strengthen those hamstring muscles. Okay, so we're gonna move on to starting to strengthen those hamstring muscles. Now, obviously this can be an area that's uncomfortable, so we wanna really start very lightly on the hamstring exercises. So I recommend starting with just isometric contractions. And a simple way to do that is just stand up on a block or or a couple of books a few inches off the so a few inches off the ground and with the say if I'm treating my right leg I'm gonna engage my glutes and I'm gonna bend my knee to 90 degrees and I'm gonna hold this position for 10 seconds and then I'm gonna slowly let it come down and then I'm gonna come up again I'm gonna do that 10 times and each time I bend the knee I'm gonna hold it for 10 seconds now if that's, if that's aggravating the problem, if you can feel it pulling or for whatever reason, maybe your ha a high hamstring strain is really flared up, then just stick with the fascia release work for the first week and do that for like a straight week without adding the hamstring exercises. However, if the hamstring, if this movement feels good, you can perform three sets of that. Where you each, so each set will be 10 repetitions. You hold it for 10 seconds and you come down. You do that 10 times, that's one set, and you can do three sets of that. If that's feeling good and it's feeling comfortable, you can add some resistance. Simply just take a resistance band and put it around the ankle and get back up on the block. And it, now with the resistance band, bend that knee, engage the glutes and bend that knee and hold it again for 10 seconds with the resistance. You can also add an ankle weight. And again, 10 second holds, come down slowly, Come back up, 10 second holds. So we'll do 10 repetitions. And again, you can do three sets of, of those same exercises, the isometric contractions, but using some resistance to it. The next exercise you can begin doing is bridges. Get on, the, get on your back, have the knees bent, arms by your side. I want you to start with using both legs at the same time so that the, the uninjured leg can help and assist the injured side, okay? And I want you to, from this position, you're going to press up. Again, we're going to hold it for 10 seconds. And then you're going to come down nice and slow and come back up. Once again, we're going to do 10 repetitions. So repetition is holding it for 10 seconds and coming back down. That's one rep. We're going to do 10 reps 
for three sets. Once that's feeling good and you think you're ready for it is extend one leg out. And this is the side that's bothering me here. We're going to do single leg bridges like that. Again, build up so you can hold for 10 seconds and then come down slowly and then come back up and hold for 10 seconds, okay? So that would be the other exercise to add in. Once those two exercises, the one I just showed you standing and the bridges, it's feeling good, you, you have, you're building up some strength, you know, then you can slowly add in other hamstring exercises if you're going to the gym and you wanna try some light leg curls, anything you can start slowly starting to build up strength and strengthening. We're still not stretching this hamstring. We're, we're doing the soft tissue work and we're doing the strengthening exercises and, and we're gonna follow that up with, now these, these exercises you can do daily. The soft tissue work was every other day. The exercises I just showed you are daily. And then we're gonna stretch out those hip flexors and that again is gonna be a daily thing. Okay, so for the hip flexors, I want you to do these three stretches, one right after the other. We're gonna hold each one for 30 seconds. We're gonna start by just sitting back, buttocks to heels and leaning back. Use your arms to, to support you. And I want you to try to open up the hips in this position like that. And hang out in this position for 30 seconds, just breathing deeply. If you wanna get up against a bench for some support, you can use a bench for some support. You don't really need a bench, you can just use your arms. But not only are we leaning back, but we're trying to open this angle up. So hang out here for about 30 seconds, breathing deeply. From this position, we're gonna go right into the next stretch. Say I wanna stretch the right hip flexor. I'm gonna bring the left foot, the left foot up. Now the psoas muscle is attached to my lumbar spine, so I need to keep my torso straight. If I bend, if I bring my torso down, I'm actually lowering the muscle down, so I'm not gonna get a, a very effective stretch. I need to keep my body upright. The other thing is the psoas attaches kind of more toward the back of the femur, so I like to rotate my leg this way to bring the muscle more in alignment with the, in the whole muscle in, a, in proper alignment. So I rotate the leg keeping the torso up, and then I'm gonna lean forward from this position like that. And again, I'm gonna stretch that psoas, and I'm gonna hold this for 30 seconds. Play around with it. If you've never done it this way with the leg rotated, it may not feel like you're doing much at first, but once you find the correct position, you'll feel it. It's like, oh yeah, that feels really good. You know, you'll find a good spot, hold that for 30 seconds, breathing deeply. And then after that, get on a bench, hook that back leg, that back foot, and I want you to sit, uh, get up straight, feel that stretch coming all the way up, and then lean out like this. So have this bent up, lean forward, and feel a nice stretch like that. What I think I'm doing on this stretch also, getting back to that stretch we just did, is I think of actually bringing my foot, I slide it more towards the back side for the same exact reason. And then I'm just gonna stay up, sit up straight, and I'm gonna hold this breathing deeply for 30 seconds. Just like the hamstring, exercises, the hip flexor stretches can be done on a daily basis. Okay, so get working on this high hamstring strain. If this is something that's been going on for months, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some time on your part to invest some time into working those techniques. But as time goes on each week, you're gonna notice less and less discomfort back there. And you're gonna notice that you're gonna be able to do more and more. You're gonna be able to do more hamstring strengthening. And once it's back to normal and everything's feeling great, I mean, you can go back to doing some hamstring stretches, but we just don't want to stretch it during the recovery process. We want to just strengthen it for a while and loosen up those hip flexors. So keep that in mind. You know, once it's resolved and everything's good, you know, you can go back to your normal stretching routine, which probably includes, you know, some hamstring stretches, but always keep in mind to stretch those hip flexors don't just stretch the ha uh, hamstrings. People sometimes have a bad habit of overstretching the hamstrings and then neglecting other areas such as the hip flexors. So anyways, give all those techniques a try. Get working on it. Leave me some feedback. I'd love to hear from everyone. Let me know how you're making out. Leave me a comment in the comments section down below. Best of luck to everybody. Stay young, train hard. Hey, if you haven't done so already, visit my website, www.okramedhealth.com. We have a full line of fascia release products. Those, those Tai Chi Max Balls, which are awesome for working the hamstrings, are in stock, ready to ship out. So when you have a chance, check out the website. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel, Okra Med Health on YouTube. Questions about exercises or injuries, just leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I do the best I can to get back to everybody. And don't forget, Okra Med Health is here to keep you fit forever.